Hello there. We are in the quarterfinal stage of the Skilling Open. Let's get the mic here. And, well, I'm going to start by uh, yeah, going match by match. And the first match we're going to look at is the match between Wesley So and Tamur Rajabov. To clarify things a bit, the quarterfinals are played uh, over two days. So there's one match each day. So if you win the match on one day, you get a, you get a point. And if you lose, then you have to come back the other day and tie it. So there will only be uh, tight breaks in Armageddon if after the two days, the match is tight, one win each. So without further ado, we are going to look at uh, the match between Wesley So and Tamer Rajabov. And this is in fact the first game. Wesley had the white pieces and he opened up with pawn to e4. e5 by Rajabov. We have the uh, king pawn opening and Rui Lopez. Why do I keep saying Rui Lopez? It's the Italian game. I was thinking that if white had gone for the Rui Lopez, I was going to mention that uh, for, a, for a good while, Tami Rajabov was one of the leading experts of the Yanish, uh, the Yanish gambit, and used it as a, a drawing weapon at the highest levels. But Wesley went for the Italian, bishop c4. And we've seen, of course, similar stuff. Go for the quiet Italian here. And uh, there are choices for both sides. I mean, usually we see black decide between a6 and a5. Uh, we see uh, either side usually putting a bishop here on e3 and then the question is to trade or not to trade and for black do we go d5 or not we see some games by Aronian where he goes d5 we saw a game with a5 I think by, by Magnus Carlsen and some games with, with a6 so it's a it's a matter of choice in this game Rajabov goes for a6 a4 by uh, Wesley So securing the space over there on the queen side rook e1 rook e8 and of course the usual maneuver here of the knight and bishop e6 black is first to give the choice to white and white elects to take now having played the rook to e8 uh, it probably makes less sense to take with a pawn when you take with a pawn you're opening the f-file so you don't want to, want to have to move it back so Rajabov takes with the rook now, so goes for more space here, b4, finally goes on the f1 square, heading for g3, eventually, queen c2, so both sides positioning their forces, now rook d8 by Rajabov, and this signals that he might be thinking about opening the position up with uh, pawn to d5, but first we see b5 here by Rajabov, now it can't be automatic, uh, black can't take this pawn obviously because then we have still the attack and we open up an attack here So the knight has to move knight to e7 And now this Yeah, okay yeah. We can see e5 pawn a bit, but we'll, maybe we're still threatening to play uh, d5 But the Wesley so didn't want to wait for that so he played d4 himself figuring that his pieces were decently posted for this Knight g6, knight g3, and knight is b5. Obviously the pawn isn't hanging because the bishop now hangs. We don't have time for this. But now you're threatening the pawn, so Wesley uh, protects it. And the rook goes back to e8. Kind of an artificial square if you're not going to swing it over here. So best just to uh, bring it back and, and wait and see how the position develops further before you decide where to put the brooks. Bishop b3 now, uh, sort of finishing development in a way, the final uh, minor piece is coming out, although very often we consider uh, the piece to be kind of developed because it's ready for action on c1 in these structures. But okay, we're at least connecting the rooks, queen to e7, and both sides are sort of you know, probing around and see what they can do. Finally, uh, Wesley decides to go in with a knight here, knight to f5, queen e6. Optically, white feels slightly better, but probably the evaluation is around equal and, and black is obviously very solid. 
Now the bishop goes back. Uh, he can do that now since he put the rook here. You see that in many openings you move out the bishop and you, and you put a rook on an open file and then put the bishop back. We even mentioned that in one game. I think I came by Magnus Carlsen where he had black and he played bishop d7. Now queen c4. So Ratibov doesn't want to get completely cramped and decides to get active with the queen. But then he's leaving the king side and Wesley decides to go for it. He takes on h6 here. Bishop takes h6. But is this good? Let's see. Pawn takes and queen to d2. He wants to take this and try to mate. Now there are not any pieces that can come over. This looks difficult. But we can uh, open up for our pieces. We can play f6. The idea is to put the queen here. Stop the mate once you take here. So Wesley says, fine, I'll just block the queen, d5. The queen is not coming home to defend. And now you have a big problem if I come in here and here. But Rajabov now opens up for the rook. Now he can play rook d7 and defend the mate. So in the end, uh, since he can't do that, Wesley decides to take with a knight instead. And now we have a, a, a repetition here. In this position for the second time. And... Wesley could actually have played knight h6 here, and we have a threefold repetition. However, he decided to go for more, and he played knight h2. Trying to improve this knight, he wants to put it on g4. But, okay, knight f4 by Ratibov, closing the route of the queen over here, knight c4, hitting f6, uh, Ratibov fortifies with knight h7 g3 and now instead of retreating when there could be some problems well it could be there are problems if you retreat to either, either square this one this one here or this one here the queen can come in and the queen from mate 6 is going to threaten mate and attack the knight so Rajiv will need to find some, something here he played knight g5 and this seems good because now we don't have time to take because there's a big, big fat check here on, on f3. Wesley decides to defend it with his knight. And now king f7. Sacrificing a piece. Sacrificing the piece back. So takes the piece and now knight takes h3. King h2 and knight takes f4. And now we can take stock and we see that the material has equaled out, but the initiative now has fully transferred over to black because white's king is actually weaker than black's king, and black is ready to swing the rooks over, and he has a very active bishop as well, eyeing some things if uh, if we uh, go for the killer blow. So let's see what happened. Knight eight six, king e seven, rook e one. And Ratibov runs further with his king. If he wants, he can get quite safe here for the time being, if needed. So Wesley anticipates that, but that costs a pawn. Queen takes e4, knight f5, and this fantastic move here by Ratibov, rook g8. Uh, once he got off the hook, perhaps Wesley should have indeed gone for the repetition. Once Ratibov got off the hook, he Showed fantastic tactical lie here, rook g8. Wesley took the rook, now queen takes. And this incoming threat here is very annoying. Wesley tried to play rook g7 here, but calmly king e8 by Ratibov. Queen d1. But this allows the queen to come into h3. King g1. And now Ratibov finishes it off with a nice king move. Some very calm king moves in this game by Rajabov. Rook g4, king f7. Now the knight doesn't have a square, we're trying to take it. Note that the g3 square was never available to the rook because we simply take, utilizing this pin here. So white is simply running out of moves and he's going to lose this game. Once we take on g8, this threat is going to be too much. And we can't move the queen because the rook hangs, so white just doesn't have anything and Ratibov, well, 
first blood to Rajabov, he took the first game. Now, the second game was drawn. Rajabov had the white, and we are going to move into the third game. Vestal saw again with the white pieces, and this time around he goes for the English opening, c4. We are knight f6, and knight c3, e5. We've seen this before. Mainland stuff, four knights of the uh, the English opening. We already seen a game in this tournament where we saw g3, d5. A Nakamura game against Lai Kuang Liam, where he plundered. Well, got hit by a tactical shot, the thunder, the thunderbolts. In this game, however, Wesley goes with e3, a different line. Bishop b4 by uh, Tamor and queen c2. We see castles, knight d5, rook to e8. So black is playing for a quick development of the pieces. Doesn't mind if white takes because white has then spent three moves on the knight and black will be quite fast to play d5 and open things up. And white has to be careful even though he gets the bishop pair. So people have even pre preferred this move, queen to f5. And this puts a little bit of pressure on black to do something. And one way to uh, release the pressure is to offer the trade. And Rajabov does offer the trade. And that's all we have. So, a solid position for black, but he has taken on these double pawns. Let's see what happened. A3, bishop back to c5. And b4. So once again, just like in the other opening, Wesley seizes the queenside space. Bishop b2. A6 and along castles. I quite like this position for white. Bishop f5, rook g1. Interesting idea. He wants to maybe at some stage push g4. Knight e7, and now d4 by so. Bishop comes to e4, attacking the knight. He doesn't want to allow the double pawn, so knight e2, and the bishop goes back. Again, knight f3, so. Probing around a bit to see if uh, Ratzibov will repeat, but surprisingly he doesn't repeat. He, he's up a game, so power chess here by Ratzibov, but let's see. B5 now. And C6. So Ratzibov is trying to open up the game, where White is uh, keeping his king. You can attack even though we don't have queens, it's possible. So Wesley tries to fortify the king side, and he doesn't want to open the C file. Because then black is getting at his king, so he takes with the a pawn. But that frees the pawn to move, and he moves the pawn, and so tries to block it. Now we have e takes d4 by Ratibov, and e takes d4. And it looks like white has things more or less under control here. Uh, he has a space advantage, and Black doesn't seem to be doing anything uh, too dangerous. I mean, this pawn is hanging. We can imagine, you know, trying to improve the position. Bishop d3, takes, takes, and go from there. But Ratzibov played a very nice move here. Played knight to d5. Knight to d5. Offering up a full knight. And, well... So did not fancy taking it, but let's have a look. If he takes, we are going to give a big check here. First off, you can't go here, checkmate. Let's get the easy stuff out first. Okay, we go here. It's going to be a check. Now this walks into a discovery. Have to go here. Now we introduce another piece. This is very difficult for white. Even if he tries to close things up here, we can play this. Double attack. And we win our piece back and even more. Wherever the king goes, we could take the piece back, but actually we, we can start giving checks. If you go here, we give a check. If you go to a1, we give a check. It's actually winning for black. So the knight can't be taken. So knight d5, very nice move. So it decides to uh, play king b2 here. Stop the knight from jumping in. Taking this pawn probably looks dangerous as well. We might be able to start pushing the a pawn. 
something uh, you, know, you know similar to that knight c3 first probably and then post the pawn king b2 was played bishop a5 another power move again offering the knight and this time it's less less clear if, if the compensation is complete again wesley checking out he didn't take but it must be said it looks very very dangerous there's a check here uh, the rook could land as well on, on c3 in some cases uh, rook c1 doesn't look good we take take and rook the other rook to c8 and the black bishops, uh, bishops are just tremendous in this position white can hold the balance with, with best play but in a rapid game uh, it looks very dangerous so wesley instead uh, decided to grab the pawn here but now the knight jumps into c3 attacking the rook and knight e4 where does the bishop go back to g3 but now we're coming in a3 check king a2 knight comes into c3 i don't think we want the king back here but do we have a choice i don't know he took the pawn and this looks really dangerous and Rajabov, well, he pounced here. He played bishop b4 check, offering the bishop. If you go back to b2, you can mate it. Well, you should get made it here. Worst case scenario, I can, I can take the rook. But it looks like mate. I might be wrong. But it's completely winning either way. So, Wesley still actually took uh, the bishop. But now knight a2. And one would have thought... The king would go back and you know try to do something but king c5 and after rook e6 it's actually close to lights out the threat is let's say we move the rook b6 and checkmate if you had played rook e1 then i can play also rook, b, rook here uh, i can also well <laughs> i'm spoiled for choice here for mates right so everything mates even if you prevent this mate which wesley tried with uh, pawn to b6 he actually got mated rook to a5 so fantastic stuff by rajabov winning two games with the black pieces and this actually ended the uh, match on day one two and a half half for rajabov so Quite clear, Wesley So needs to come back tomorrow. He needs to win the match. And yeah, we'll have to see what happens. I mean, Razibov won the World Cup. That's how he qualified for the candidates. So he's very tough in, in, in rapid and in these matches. So do not count out Temur Razibov. So that was day one. Uh, so against Razibov. And I'll see you in another video from this tournament. Thank you.